All right, well, uh, I've got an overheating problem on a 2011 Chevy Malibu. Uh, I would imagine the basics, as far as the engine goes, are going to be the same on any engine that, or any Chevy GM product that has a 3.6 liter V6 in it. Um, I could be wrong on that, of course. I mean, I, I would assume that it's more or less going to be dressed the same. The engine compartment is probably going to be a little bit different. But um, we need to be able to get a thermostat. I believe it's a thermostat. Um, it's the most likely culprit. Uh, typically, if you've got a water pump going out, they tend to dump water all over the place and the system won't hold pressure. Uh, I don't have that problem. Uh, when I cracked open the, the overflow, the water bubbled up into it, so it clearly had pressure. Um, I wasn't noticing mass quantities of water. Typically, a water pump will dump lots of water on the ground. So the most likely culprit is a thermostat. So we're going to go for that first. It's also an inexpensive fix. And as far as uh, changing things goes, it's actually fairly non-invasive. <laughs> non-invasive. So what we're going to do first is I've got to get some of the stuff out of the way. So uh, we'll start by getting uh, the cover off the engine, get access to it. We're going to take off some of the uh, air duct here uh, just to get it out of the way. That's really the whole point of this. So let's start with that. All right, so to start, uh, I'm just going to take off the cladding that comes off. You'll see that a lot of this stuff has uh, got like a little pressure buttons on it. So we'll take off the oil fill, and then this whole piece just lifts off. There's a little compression knob here that just pops. You heard it pop, and you can see what that looks like on the underside. It's just a little ball there on the motor. There's the little ball, and there's the little pocket, just a, a little socket that it sits in on the cover, and then. Uh, the, actually, the oil cover, uh, the little fill that I just took off, the fill cap, it actually holds this other side down. That's what holds this side of it down. And that's it. And that just lifts off. I'll set that out of the way. And then same thing with this cover. There's just a pocket right here in the middle. So we lift this up. It's totally flexible. And it just pops. There we go. And again, you see the socket on here. And you see the ball right there. That's it. And it's super flexy. This stuff... So, you know, pretty easy. Take that off, get it out of the way. Um, we'll pop the, let's turn the camera. We just pop the two clips on the back here of the air cleaner. Now that's loose. And we'll be able to pull that out. And let's get that. But first, before I pull the cover off, just to keep everything a little easier, I'm going to uh, take and disassemble this one piece right here. Just take that one bolt off there. And by taking that bolt out, it's going to release this whole air tube. It's the intake um, into the throttle body. And we're just going to go ahead and loosen that and then uh, loosen this one clamp right here. And that's it. All right, so I've moved to the other side of the engine. And I'm on the driver's side of the vehicle here, just in the driver's side front corner. And to take that bolt off, uh, you probably already guessed, it's a can't see it, it won't focus, it's a 10 millimeter. That's a big shock to anybody who's ever worked on a modern vehicle. Uh, yeah, so a 10 meter bolt, and now uh, that is disconnected, it's completely loose. And then uh, I also already loosened up the uh, clamp there, and so we're ready to pull this guy apart. So uh, we'll just go ahead and pull this off, pull this out, and just lift all this stuff free and we are now have access to the rate to our system so we can go ahead and get that thermostat out all right so now that we've got the uh, air tube out of the way let's go ahead and tip this down so you can see what we got to do here it's a little hard to see it I will zoom in but I want to point it out first to, to give you some context so here's our throttle body we just took the tube off of that and we look down and right below that that is the thermostat housing right there there's three bolts on it let's zoom in hopefully I can do this nice and steady and not make you sick alright there we go we zoom in and you can see those three bolts uh, each of those is a 10 millimeter. Not again, not a surprise, right? So those three bolts will need to come off, 
And once those three bolts are off, you may, uh, you may find that the housing stays put. It doesn't move at all when you first get those out. Don't let that freak you out. Uh, they're, they're sealed together pretty tight. Um, I don't think in the factory they use any sealant, although it is possible. Uh, the thing, though, is that you really want to do is you know, make sure those bolts are completely removed and then pop it loose. You'll probably have some fluid that comes out. would not be surprising to find uh, some coolant behind there. Not at all. That would not be a surprise, especially if you haven't drained your system. Uh, clearly, there will be thermostat, uh, excuse me, thermostat. Well, thermostat's back there, too, but there will be coolant behind that. The thermostat holds that into the engine. So uh, if you haven't drained the, the engine down, you will definitely have coolant behind that. If you have drained the engine down, there still might be coolant uh, because uh, the air doesn't necessarily travel all the way through the motor, and coolant can get caught in places. It's not unheard of by any stretch. So um, you can just uh, drain the coolant out of the radiator, disconnect the lowest connection out of the radiator to get the hose just to drain into a tub, and then um, go for it. Uh, the thing that you're going to want to be careful of regardless is make sure you catch all the coolant. Uh, obviously it's a pollutant, it's not something we want in the environment, so do make sure you put something underneath the engine, put something underneath your vehicle to catch all that. And a lot of car places, uh, you know, car parts stores will take that in. Some mechanic shops will. Sometimes you have to pay. Sometimes they'll take it for free. It really depends. Uh, but, you know, ask around. You might find you get a deal and they won't charge you for it. But next thing we got to do, we got to get that housing apart. All right. Well, I've already got them busted loose, but I'm just using a, uh, just a ratcheting wrench here, as you can see. And I'm just going to get these guys off the rest of the way and I don't know if they're loose enough yet to do it by hand it is sorry I'm sure you got a hairy arm in the shot I apologize for that so we'll just let's go that you can see they're nice and long uh, there's a little spacer in here and so we got to be careful not to lose that that's the kind of thing that can cause you trouble let me just show you that on the camera uh, a little blurry, I apologize, but there is a, a little width spacer on there. So if you have something like that, do your best to keep track of it. You don't want to lose them, because it will probably come back to haunt you later. This one is actually already coming loose uh, as I loosen these, so that just shows it does not have any sort of sealant on it. But it will have a gasket in there, and I uh, if you've already been seeing some leakage, probably the gasket needed to be replaced. But regardless, uh, you know, a gasket is cheap. It's usually a couple bucks. Um, it's just not worth cheaping out. You definitely want to replace that gasket. I've tried it. <laughs> Different days when I was more broke than others. And uh, I'll tell you what, man, uh, replacing gaskets is worth a couple bucks because they almost always tear getting them out and even if they don't a lot of times they're kind of used up all right so here's another one now this one's a little different length than the first one so i got to be sure to keep them straight as to which one's which those are not the same not the same size and i'll go ahead and Get that last one loose. I'm gonna have to use a wrench to loosen that, but you can see what I'm doing. And my big hairy arms in the way, you don't want that. And uh, you can see the coolant is starting to come out there, so I've got the pan underneath to catch all that. So I'll go ahead and remove that and we'll rejoin you. All right, so I've got those three bolts out, and uh, I'm gonna pull this back uh, as it, I already did. Now you can see the floodgates open. I got stuff everywhere up on top of the motor here, but uh, it did all drain down. I have a, a catch pan down below, so that all drained out. And uh, now we want to pull this out. And it can be a little tricky because uh, I'm, I really would prefer not to go through the trouble of having to remove all the hoses, but I may yet have to, especially this guy. He's giving me some trouble. He's kind of in the way. And those go up to the heater core and provide the heat into the engine. Uh, but this guy here might need to come off so that I can pull the housing back far enough. We'll see. But um, the thermostat's right on the other side of that. Um, so something happened that I have never seen before. Uh, this is the air intake tube that I pulled off the car. And uh, let me widen this shot out just a little bit. 
and uh, you would have just seen me take this off a shot or two ago and what happened was when I pulled it off there was this awful noise it was a splat and I'm like what in the world is that and the end of the tube and I'm not sure how well this is going to transpose onto film is full of this goop which if you've ever worked on engines you already know that is a combination of water and oil so I freaked out my first instinct was that we have a serious problem with the engine. Well, then I checked the engine oil. Dipstick is clean. And the coolant is clean. So what's the deal? Well, I started smelling this, and it smells bad. Well, now that may not come as a surprise, except that it doesn't smell like antifreeze. That's not antifreeze. It's not coolant. It's just water. And it's got some oil in there. And you go, well, where the devil did all that come from? Well... Chevy built this lovely little piece onto the underside of this thing, and I was wondering what that was for. Well, clearly, that is a condensation collector. And so you take the condensation from all that air being pushed through this motor, it settles into that little collector there, and then you take, oh, you know, 180,000 miles worth of the, uh, the oil vapors that come out of that... Um, valve there on top of the motor and you put those together and you get slime so I'm gonna have to clean that up now uh, one thing is that I was very fortunate did not get into the mass airflow sensor you get this stuff into the mass airflow sensor you're gonna have a job on your hands cleaning that out uh, that bad boy um, those things are super expensive and because uh, I've replaced them before and that stinks and uh, the, even the cleaner just to clean a mass airflow sensor is not cheap so I would really encourage you be careful if you're taking these off because uh, I was not did not know that that was going to do that so a little bit of a warning to all my friends out there and hopefully that saves you some trouble some time and some money and uh, also maybe a little stress because in this case like I said this is nothing wrong in the engine this is just water off the road you know, it, condensation from the air that just collects in the air system as it all rams down through here and it collected into that little thing and combined with that little bit of uh, vapor of oil, 180 miles worth of vapors, that just c makes enough oil to cause that. Gross. But, like I said, if it saves you trouble, it was worth me going through it. Now i got to figure out how to clean that out. Hmm. Alright, so I've got the new thermostat, and um, let's see if we can get a focus here. Now, um, this is the new one, and uh, it's a little hard to tell, maybe, but there's the old one, and there's the new one. It goes in just like this. It goes in like that. See where that is? Now, here's the thing. If you look, there's this these two tabs here. Well, those tabs ride way down there. And then this big heavy spring sticks this guy up, pushes that up. So here's the thing. you got to take this tool. It comes with it. It's just a cardboard tube. It's a real heavy cardboard tube. And you've got to compress the sides down so that you can unlock them from the tabs they're sitting under. Let's see if I can zoom in. So you can see that that right there, whoops, let's get my finger out of the way, right there is that bracket that goes across and you can see it's hooked under a tab there and over there. So if I zoom back out and show you on this one, so those are those two tabs, so that's got to go, that's got to compress a long way to get that compressed down to get it on there. And once you compress it, then you rotate this to free it, get the old one out, and then we got to reverse that to put this one in using a cardboard tube and down in that amount of space it doesn't look like a lot of fun to me so I got a big old pair of pliers I'm going to use those and um, we'll see how this works out so hang on alright um, <laughs> I should have showed it I suppose but I just popped the throttle body off it's four bolts the whole thing comes off they're just 10 millimeter and an electrical plug I mean it just unplugs it's super easy but I couldn't get at it. I just couldn't get at it. So I ended up popping that throttle body off there. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the uh, cardboard tube here and uh, that goes 
over that piece there and that sits against those little flanges. And then I have what is probably the world's largest <laughs> pair of pliers. You could use a clamp, I'm sure, and maybe that'll work better. I'm just going to try this and see how it works. If it doesn't work, I'll grab a, a clamp. But I just have to depress that enough to be able to rotate it. And it's, it's a very exacting sort of thing. You've got to have it in just the right place. And you just pinch it down, turn it till it's free, and release it. And there we go. So here's the old one, which um, I believe is our culprit. I believe that's the whole problem. I guess we'll find out whether or not that's it or not when we put it all back together again. But um, let's compare that to the new one. So this is the new one. There's the old one. Uh, very, very similar in size. This one's got a rubber seal, but being that it's inside of a casing, it probably doesn't matter all that much. You just got to make sure that pin sits down inside that hole from the looks of things. Other than that, it looks like they pretty much are the same. And uh, all right, there we go. Let's make it happen. All right, so um, I'm just going to take this guy and make sure it's sitting down in that opening. So that's seated. I want this these tabs turned so that they will compress past that point. I'll put this guy right side up. I already kind of mangled that one edge, so we'll make sure that's in the same place. That goes right around that. World's largest pliers. Those are big pliers. And take our time, get it set, and compress. I like the theory. We'll see if it works, right? Alright, we'll just turn it back into place. It sounds easy enough, except of course for the fact it doesn't want to turn. Getting those two tabs both to line up at the same time is proving to be a little tricky. There it goes, I think. <laughs> Hard to tell. I think it's started. It's definitely not all the way in, though. I, think I actually need to. Uh, Compress my world's largest pliers here. All right. There it goes. Almost got it. I just kind of keep compressing and releasing until I get those two ears to sit right. And let's pull this off. All right, this side is right. That side's up just a little bit. Oh, there you go. Just a little push with the finger. And there we go. She's in. That's all there is to it, ladies and gentlemen. I say it's all there is to it. I feel like I disassembled half the engine. But no, I mean, seriously, it's really just a handful of things. So now we got to put her all back together again. But uh, yeah, I don't know. I mean, you could use, I'm sure, like a... You could use a... Uh, you know, one of those trigger clamps would fit in there real nice, but uh, these are some bad boys. These are these are big, but they work for me for this job. It's just that's why I have it. I actually bought it originally for a two-inch piece of pipe. I needed to get on something, and um, boy, they're handy to have around. All right, so next thing is uh, we just put the um, gasket in place, and we'll reset all that stuff first. We'll get the uh, housing all back in and then I'll put the throttle body back on. Now that it's out of the way we'll just work with it while it's out of the way. So this gasket has got a piece of peel and stick on one side and it's actually on the engine side which kind of bums me out. It would have been easier actually to put it onto the, the housing there. It would have been a lot easier to put it on there uh, stick it. 
but the peel and stick is on the other side. So we got to stick this to the engine. So you can't see it real well. It's actually very, very hard to see down in there, even without the camera, without trying to do it with the camera. But um, I did go ahead and wipe down the gasket surface. It's nice and clean and dry. And now we'll just peel this and stick it in place. Yeah, if you've watched our channel much, you probably know that I'm a freak for gloves, but frankly, there's just no room in here. It's so tight, especially with mega hands like I got. And even trying to get in here and get this gasket in place is a real chore because everything is in the way. So i got to keep working at it. I'll get it. So what I'm going to do... <laughs> I got the bolts. I'm actually going to get the bolts started and then I can just slide the gasket down in there because I'm having a really hard time trying to align the gasket and it's very sticky so I kind of am only going to get one shot. I'm afraid I'm going to screw it up. So I've got the um, all the bolts at the top of the gasket or the, the gasket slipped to the top of the bolts I guess would be more accurate and then uh, I'm just going to get each of these started and then I'll slide the gasket down against the housing and um, it'll seat automatically because it'll be registered in the holes so should be hundred percent so I got you really close in here um, you can see that I've got all three bolts there's one two and three is down there in the shadows those are all started so now I can just slide the gasket down and seat it and I don't have to worry about it not being lined up because it's automatically going to register with the bolts. It's the only way I could figure out how to do it. Again, it's pretty sticky. I only get one shot and it's way too tight for me to get my big old hands in. So this is going to make sure that everything's in the right place. It'll go down flat and straight and because uh, you really can't get it too torqued out of position. You can't, uh, you can't go whopper jawed with it because it's really a pretty tight fit on those bolts now that they're in the hole. So I just slide the whole thing down, seat it, and then we can put the uh, put the whole cartridge here back in place. Here we go. Well, I went ahead and slid it down. It's seated. It looks good. I wish I could have showed you, but quite frankly, all you were going to see was uh, probably the backside of a hairy arm, and that's no interesting thing. At least not for most people. And um, so now uh, I did manage to scuff a knuckle, but uh, you know, uh, a little bit of bloodletting is okay, right? I mean, they did it like in the Middle Ages. Um, human race survived, so maybe they were on something. I don't know. Anywho, let's go ahead and we're going to get that, um, all the hoses kind of untangled, get the, um, the whole, that whole piece all back in place there, and uh, we'll be ready to boulder down. All right, so um, I just turned the housing, set it, uh, set the thermostat up inside the engine, and now we are ready to put the bolts back on. So um, I laid them all on the bench to make sure they're in the right place. I just remembered though that that bottom one is really tricky and I think I need to put it into the housing first and then set the housing in place. So get that guy started up inside the housing there and then I'll bring the housing up against the block. I think that is going to be more successful. And again, I apologize, I can't see what you are seeing with my camera. But uh, you can see that it is started there. A little piece of electrical tape stuck to my hand. So that bottom one is started. So now I can get the other two started. And I did keep track of which one's which because, as I said, uh, they are different lengths. So this one was the top one. You can see actually on the housing when you look at it why. I don't know why they made it longer on this side. I'm sure there's a good reason for it. But you can go ahead and get that guy started. Snug her up just a bit. Just keep that housing from moving all over the place. Get the last one started. I don't have it any more than just barely touching the gasket at this point as far as tightness goes. You really want to tighten all this stuff down as even as you can because uh, I mean, I've seen guys break these housings. I've seen, I, I broke one one time. Uh, that's been, I think I was about 14, <laughs> but you know, this stuff happens, man. And uh, so there we go, we got those started. And see if I can get this guy 
a little bit better. And again, I do apologize for being in the way. I suspect that I am blocking your view 100%. But again, this is way down in there. And even just looking, it's hard to see. So there we go. You can see all those are in. So now get out my trusty ratcheting wrench here. I'm going to start with the loosest one. It doesn't quite want to turn the ratchet. The ratchet doesn't want to... The mechanism doesn't want to engage because there's not enough pressure against it. So we'll just... Just snug that up. Just like one finger tight. And even then, it's just barely. I mean, I'm not applying any real pressure to it at all. Just, just enough that I can feel there's pressure. And I just want to be real gentle and real even getting this stuff back in place. No reason to go crazy with the torque right now. We're just working our way around it, just snugging it up. I know that it is possible to get a wrinkle in a gasket or cause a little ripple, just enough to get, you know, that tiniest little leak. And, sort of stuff will drive you bonkers and if you actually had to disassemble this whole mess to fix something like that that would be so frustrating now I had mentioned that it's always worth spending a couple bucks for a new gasket uh, this one actually came with one and you know it's one of those things sometimes they do sometimes they don't some companies sell with them some companies don't this one it was less than 20 bucks and it came with the gasket and the tool. And I tell you what, that little cardboard tube, it's, you know, you think, oh, it's cardboard, it ain't going to do anything. I don't know if I could get a second one on and off with it because I mangled it a little bit. But um, it sure worked for this. Got one on, and that's all it needs to do. All right, so now we're coming in for final tightening. And I always try to be really careful. Um, I'm sure there's a foot pounds for this stuff, but I don't have a specification book and I do know about how hard I had to push to get it loose so I'm just really using one finger and if you can see what I'm doing there I'm just using one finger to push with and uh, maybe a little bit of a thumb action there but that's it because I don't want to overdo it but I want it to be tight enough it's not going to leak I suppose it depends on your size and build how much pressure you'll have to put on it but I believe that is tight and ready to rock. So now I get to start reassembling everything. So the next thing, throttle body. All right, so the throttle body, uh, it's really, it's actually very small. It's a small little piece. There's not much to it. And it really is, uh, the gasket is already integral into the design. I just made making sure it's clean. I see I missed a little spot here, so we're going to wipe that off. I'm just making sure it's clean before I go to reassemble it, but... Uh, everything looks good, so I'm just going to go ahead and line this bad boy up. And then i got the bolts sitting right here, and they are all the same length, thankfully. None of that nonsense like before. But we'll get all these guys started. And you'll see how simple this is. Uh, truly, it's four bolts, and they're you know equally spaced at all four corners. Last one, and boy, I tell you, um, you know, forgive me. I never, never, ever want to insult anybody. If I say something, you already know. Well, that's awesome for you um, that you already know it. But never, never, ever, ever start anything with power tools. Um, I know they do it, you know, in NASCAR, and it looks super cool. But those guys also got a lot of money to replace those lugs and studs and everything after every race. Um, you know, you don't want to be stripping out this intake body or anything like that because uh, oh boy so you know always 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 I, I don't care what it is I have never I would never ever recommend starting anything with power if it's not going to start by hand and probably it's cross threaded and so this uh, some of it I can get at with the ratchet handle and I'll just get it till, like I said, just till it touches. I, you know, I, I still would like to see it be able to turn by hand, just that little bit like that. Um, or, of course, with a wrench. Uh, either way. I 
And again, just till it touches. Just till it touches. And just to be able to, you can see how I can just turn that just that little bit. And that to me means that um, I haven't overdone it, you know, because I'm still trying to get it all seated nice and level. Frankly, I don't know how often stuff like this breaks because of somebody tightening one thing too much. But, uh, I, you know, I've heard of it. I've heard horror stories. I've seen guys bend wheels doing it. And I know, like I said, I broke a piece of cast um, for a... a it was actually a thermostat neck on a 350 Chevy and uh, the ear broke right off because I over tightened one side without tightening the other I didn't keep it level and it snapped it right off so you know it just doesn't seem worth the risk to me but that's very much a personal thing I guess so we'll just tighten it down now till it snugs same down there which is really hard to get at and I'm gonna to be totally in your way but I'm just gonna repeat the same thing I did down below I'm just gonna take my time tighten it up a little at a time on each corner until it's nice and tight just keep from bending stuff torquing stuff screwing stuff up it seems like it's worth the extra couple minutes it doesn't take that much time all right so I got it all pretty much snugged up so now I'll just put the finishing touches on it I try to go opposites since there's four. Since there was three, and it didn't really matter which way you go, you're never really going to go to the opposite. But I try to go to opposite corners if I can. And I'm just going by feel and making sure that it all feels the same. But I'm right down there. It feels like it's nice and tight. I think we're good to go. And so the next thing is just the, the plug on that. Which that's nothing, I just tucked it back here out of the way. And it's just got a little release tab there. When you go to take it off, just push on that and that comes right off and you push it back, it should click. There we go. And um, now we're ready to put that tube back together. I uh, do remember uh, that that thing was full of yuck. And uh, so I had to spend some time with some uh, carburetor cleaner on the inside of the tube to get that cleaned out. Um, but personally, and again, do what you like, but you know, for as expensive as a mass airflow sensor is, it just makes sense to me to use something that's designed for cleaning a mass airflow sensor. So that's what I used on the sensor itself. Because um, I did find actually there was a little bit of stuff on there. I thought that there wasn't, but I was wrong. I know I said that in the, previously in the video, uh, but I did find some goop in there. So um, I did use mass airflow sensor cleaner. It's made specifically for that. And, you know, I'm sure there are guys, again, who would say, well, you know, brake cleaner will work on all of it, or uh, throttle, you know, cleaner, throttle body cleaner, carb cleaner, whatever. Um, you know, again, it's your vehicle. Do it the way you want to. For me, uh, I think it's worth the extra couple bucks to make sure I'm using the right stuff. Uh, they, they go through the trouble. Somebody formulated that for a reason, and uh, I assume that they did it on purpose and that it works uh, the way it's supposed to for certain parts. So uh, that's my opinion, and I'm probably going to stick to it. All right, so uh, you can see that I've just placed the tube back in place. And uh, that side I have uh, just sitting on there. And uh, this side I just need to pop on and tighten the whole thing down. So it just, I like to connect that little dude first. That'd be my recommendation to you. Again, do what you like, but um, it's a lot easier. Those hoses get brittle and uh, it's easier to get those guys started first. Okay, so now that's nice and tight. Go down to this end and repeat. And these are actually keyed, which is nice so that they don't spin around the whole fitting. All right. Now once everything is together and all those pieces are in place, then and only then do I secure this last little dude right here because uh, nothing moves really once that's in place. So we, again, start it by hand, right? I know I said don't start it by, by power, but once you get it started, go for it. Uh, 
head out the door. And now we're good to go. All right, I just got to get the two uh, top pieces on. So we may as well drop those in. And we'll be all set. So this guy, you got to get it right way around. It goes like that. And there we go. Pop it on. It's just that little pressure fit. It's all it is. And then we go ahead and get that front piece on. And I like to keep these pieces right here in place just to keep stuff from falling down in the motor. I think that's a good idea. And let's get that little guy where he needs to go. There we go. Pop it in. Cover on. And we're done. That's it. Alright, so I've put a lot of coolant in it. I'm putting the cap on the overflow, uh, but it's just sort of sitting there. It's not going to be tight at all, uh, just to keep anything from splashing. That's all it is. Um, because I'll probably need to top it off. It's already actually drained down quite a bit from um, where it was. But here's the thing that's important. So you're going to start up the car. Now the thermostat actually does have, if you get yours out, look at it, there's a little tiny bobble, a little tiny piece that sort of vibrates back and forth. And so it does let some air through. It does let some fluid through. And uh, even when it's closed, it's just a tiny, tiny amount. But it does allow uh, for air to escape and get out of the system. But here's the thing, um, so with this vehicle, because of where the mass airflow sensor is, which is way over here by the air cleaner, um, I have to have that attached in order for the vehicle to run properly, but um, it's in the way, <laughs> because I like to be able to test the hoses, and uh, by feeling the hoses, you can tell whether or not you're getting circulating water. So it takes a little bit for the engine to warm up, but once the engine warms up, you should have both hoses get hot. And if only one is, is uh, hot, that means the other one is probably the one nearest the thermostat and the thermostat has not opened yet. So you want to test to make sure they both open. The other thing is on most vehicles, or certainly at least on an older vehicle, you can look right down inside the radiator and you can see the water flowing through the radiator. If the water is flowing through the radiator, then you know that you have the thermostat open. Well, with this vehicle, I can't do that. The, the radiator is up here in the front, but there is no radiator cap. And I've had that cover off a couple times to change the headlights. And you can see my video on how to change headlights. Uh, seriously, if you could do that job, you can do this job. But my point is there is no radiator cap. There's no way to look down inside the radiator. So I really just have to rely on the level of the, in the overflow, which that overflow is pressurized. And... Um, other than that, you know, it's, it's just testing, just sort of common sense stuff, testing those hoses. Keep your fingers clear of any moving parts. Certainly, you got to stay away from the belts and pulleys, and you got to watch out for the electric fans, because they will kick on eventually, and if your finger's in the way, um, it probably wouldn't be comfortable. Because they're electric, and if, you're, if you happen to be lucky enough that you're already touching it when it kicks on, you're probably not going to get anything worse than a pinch. But if that sucker's already moving and you hit it, bad bad things so I'm gonna start this up and uh, we'll give her a go by the way in case you're wondering why I explained all that I'm not sure how well you'll be able to hear me I'm still experimenting this is a new camera and so I'm not sure how well you'll be able to hear me once the vehicles running so I just wanted to explain what I was doing so it's idled down and uh, that's a good sign uh, you can see there is some fluid in the in the uh, reservoir, but I did in fact just top that off. You can see that because it drained all the fluid out of it, which is a good sign. It means it's working the air out of the system and uh, the fluid is getting down in there. But as of right now, I've still only got heat on one hose and not on the other, so we just got to keep waiting. Okay, so. Uh, I put a little more fluid into the reservoir and you can see it kind of keeps creeping down. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to reach in. The front hose is clear of any real obstructions. There's no real hazardous points. It's not right by the fans and there's no pulleys on the back side of the engine. So 
I'm just going to reach down and kind of squeeze it a few times and you might see that, would not be surprised to see the level change over there. So let's squeeze it and see it's pushing air up inside the reservoir as it's pushing fluid back up in there. This hose does not have any pressure yet which tells me that that thermostat has not opened up. But uh, I don't know what the therm thermostat temperature is for this vehicle and it's not unusual for a vehicle to take, you know, especially at idle. It's not a hot day. It's, it's you know, 80. So it might take it a few minutes. It would not be surprising if it took five minutes or more to heat up the temperature to open the thermostat. Especially if there's a little bit of air in the system. It takes a little longer. Alright, so the hose on the front of the engine is like hot, hot. So it's going to be going pretty soon, I would expect. But this side is still cool. And when I push on it, you can see it is pushing air through the radiator or fluid. Or the, one or both. So I expect this thing to open pretty soon. Sometimes if there's an air bubble, you can kind of almost like a plunger on a toilet. You can kind of plunge the line just by squeezing it and it will allow, it'll push that air bubble out. There it goes, I think it's going, yep, yep. The hose is now suddenly heating up. Yes, sir, that's a good sign. That's what we wanted. And the hose now has got some pressure in it. Now it's resisting when I push against it. Yeah, there it goes. That is good news right there. Excellent, excellent, excellent. I got good circulation. Both uh, hoses are nice and hot. Um, I pressurized the tank. I put the top down, uh, crank the uh, crank that top down cap because it's it's a pressurized system. It actually runs cooler at pressure than it does when it's unpressurized. And um, it got up to it goes up to 13 pounds. That that. Uh, screw top is rated for 13 pounds so um, that doesn't sound like a lot but 13 pounds per square inch you start multiplying start figuring out what that would be um, you know in case of a, of a boil over or you know a hose should split or something like that um, that's a lot of pressure and you sure as heck don't want to be messing with that you want to stay clear of anything that's doing that but uh, I hope this has been helpful to you and I really hope that um, so, you know, we have a lot of videos up on here, and a lot of them are fun and derbies and races and figure eights and stuff. And some of them are repair stuff. And you know, I really hope that our repair stuff will come in handy for you, that you can see that you can do it. And um, you know, as long as you're careful, you take your time, uh, you'll be fine. So, hey, everybody out there, God bless, and have a great day. Stay safe.